Good afternoon, my name is Miguel Arbesu, and I come from the BioNMR laboratory of this uh, university. And today I will talk about intrinsically disordered proteins, why we study them using nuclear magnetic resonance, and all of this, in a few words, is unstructured biology. So, uh, proteins are biological macromolecules which consist of uh, a sequence of amino acids. And uh, they work as molecular machines that perform all the functions uh, that a cell needs in a regulated way. And how they do it is, has been studied for a long time by structural biology. And here you can see that from the very first to the, one of the latest protein structures solved, uh, a huge amount of work has been developed. And very early in this field, uh, it was proposed the, uh, what we call the structure function paradigm, which is we have a sequence of amino acids which spontaneously folds into a stable three-dimensional structure. And that structure has the right physicochemical properties to execute a definite function. And this model worked very well, but there were some proteins that had some special behaviors and uh, did not fit this model because no structure could be obtained from them. And the reason is that they don't have a, a single stable structure because intrinsically disordered proteins do not fold, but instead uh, they remain in a dynamic state. So they can fluctuate between a wide number of conformations. And at the beginning it was thought that they were just outsiders, strange objects, but in fact, with the advent of genomics and bioinformatics, it was uh, discovered that they are widespread. And in fact, most importantly, that they uh, are prevalent with increasing uh, organism complexity. Here we can observe the correlation of uh, the presence of intrinsically disordered proteins or long intrinsically disordered regions in full genomes, uh, increasing uh, with, uh, from the simplest or organism to the most complex. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, what's the biological sense of this correlation? Well, let's think of complexity in the terms of what proteins do, in terms of functions. Uh, a bacteria is a single, simple uh, organism. But instead, a human being comprises about 30 billion cells uh, forming different tissues, and working all together. So you can imagine that uh, the number of functions that a human cell has to do is much larger than those uh, of a bacteria. So what's special about IDPs to be well fitted to do this? Well, it's dynamics, because dynamics uh, make them able uh, to, to be very uh, uh, polyvalent. I mean, they can recognize different situations and act uh, specifically in each one of them. And let me illustrate this with a small example. Uh, let's put that you need to recognize different signals, for example, molecules. With a classic model, you would need uh, three different uh, proteins, each one given a specific uh, response for each one of the signals. But when complexity increases dramatically, uh, this strategy is no longer efficient. So it's better to have one single versatile molecule that can recognize each partner and respond differentially for, uh, to, the present of, to the presence of each, each one of them. And this allows you to handle all that complexity with a reasonable number of proteins and also having an exquisite uh, regulation of the processes because it's not all on and off switching. Okay? And until here, it's all wine and roses, but the truth is that intrinsically disordered proteins are quite difficult to study because they move, and they move a lot. So let me uh, illustrate this uh, with uh, an example of an intrinsically disordered audience, unlike you, in which everybody's moving. So with one photo, you cannot describe the system. But if you measure the average environment in which some elements move, you can have a description of the system. You can see that this girl is going to be in, near to the ceiling in comparison with a guy that, she, that is supporting her. So, uh, coming back to proteins, what nuclear magnetic resonance provides us in contrast to, to other techniques is average information about the chemical environment of the atomic nuclei that form the protein. 
and data dynamics. And with this data, we can construct models that give us an insight of how the intrinsically disordered proteins work. And that's it. Thank you very much. And thanks for your attention.